Hi everybody, it's Diane with Soba Tea, and I'm going to go through a little fun project. We often look at our pre-cuts and think, well, is it only usable for a pillow or a table runner or a quilt project? There's probably a lot of things we can do with all of the pre-cut and pre-fused shapes that are out there. I'm going to feature today our Rose of Sharon pack. And this Rose of Sharon pack includes 16 flower shapes of four different sizes, the center of each flower and the leaves. But today we're only gonna focus on the flowers. We're going to make these cute little accessory holders from the flower shapes. And since there's four different flower shapes and sizes, you can use any one or two, you will need two, of the shapes to make these little holders. The other things you're going to need are, I'm using fusible fleece. You'll need some fusible fleece. You'll need some coordinating snaps, okay? And I do have a big packet of the snaps plus the, the tool to put them together. And you're gonna need your sharp instrument to poke through your fabric. So let's take you through this project really, really quick. And you can make so many of these in an hour. Um, the first thing we need to do is measure and cut out enough fusible fleece for two pieces. So I'm just gonna roughly use my rotary cutter and cut along the outside to make a cut large enough for the two pieces. Next, let's take the fusible fleece, fused side together, fold it in half, and press it. We're making a very thick center to our little flower shape. Next, we need to take the paper off one side of our flowers, because we have two flowers. So we've taken the paper off and we've got a fusible side there. We want to put that fused side down on the batting. I should say fleece. I'm using fusible fleece. You can use any batting that you'd like. Next, we're going to take our sharp scissors and we're gonna cut out all the way around the edges. This takes a little bit of patience. But what I'm trying to do here is cut slightly inside the flower so that the excess batting doesn't show up when we stitch these two together. And you'll see that on a later step. And you can take the flower and you can trace it if you want to on the fusible, cut out the fusible um, before you actually put the um, shape on it to, to press it. But I just find it just as easy to take the, the time to just do this with your sharp scissor and And then it is done. And I actually go back and just double check to make sure that nothing is really, you see that little excess there? We want to kind of get rid of that and hide that underneath. Okay. So now we have that. We're going to flip that over and we're going to put the other color down on that fusible or on that side to create our little sandwich here of two fabrics to make our holder. There we go. The next step is I'm going to take a, um, a ruler, plus let me find my marking pencil here, and I want to draw a line through the center of one 
side here, this here. And let me show you on my sample why I'm doing that. I'm gonna open this up so you can kind of see. I'm gonna draw a line right through the center here and we're gonna use that as a stitch line. What it does is it really makes it fold consistently on that stitch line. So it puts an extra little divot in there, if I can call it a divot, and um, really makes it easy to fold. So that's what we're going to do next. And just kind of judge this. You could try to make it as perfect as you want, but I'm just going right down the center of this to make a line. See the line there? And we'll go to our sewing machine and stitch this, and then we're gonna do a decorative stitch on the outside of the flower. We're at our sewing machine, and it's time to make that, stitch that line right across the center of our rows. I do backstitch, just something I always do, and then just follow your line, and that will become your center crease. Now, I wanna show you too that I have actually put thread in the machine to match the color on each side. So I'm trying to do something kind of fun here. And that's the exchange of that. So when I go around the outside, what I'm going to do is keep the red on the bright side and the blue will, will run along the inside, okay? But do something fun with your, your different colorways, okay? Now, I'm gonna reset my machine so that we can do a simple zigzag around the outside of our rows. You can select any decorative stitch you'd like. As you can see over here, I have my tray out to kind of, I played with a few different things, but I'm gonna keep mine simple and use the zigzag with, which will cover the edge of the actual um, batting so you don't really see the batting very much around the edge. So have fun with this step. I flipped my design over to make sure that I had the right thread color matching my flower. I start and always stop to pivot a little bit with the needle inside the fabric, never on the outside. Otherwise it might be too loose and it might pull away from the actual rows. So we wanna always make sure that we're moving and keeping our needle inside the fabric. Okay, so let's get started. I'm just gonna do a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Turn the rows as you go and work at any pace that you feel comfortable working at. Once I get to the center of a flower or the inside of the flower, I turn it slightly. And again, I'm just using a zigzag and I slowly make that first curve and then I I have a tendency of speeding up a little bit around the curve and guiding the fabric through it. And then I come to another insert. And again, needles on the left side here, turn it a little bit. And then I keep guiding it around. time I think I'm going to try a little different decorative stitch maybe but I think it's just a great way to close up the edges and I'm trying to do my best to keep the batting inside and turn it a little bit
And you know, since I matched the thread colors between the two sides or across the two sides, even if for some reason your thread goes off the edge too far and pulls along the um, other side or the underside of this, it's kind of neat because the thread colors match. Now you can do this with invisible thread, you can do this with a completely coordinating thread so you don't worry about tension or anything else. But as long as they coordinate, I think it's kind of fun. are back at the starting spot and I do a back stitch. You do not need to do that. And cut my threads. I'll trim them up a little bit later. And there is, oops, I'm going to actually trim those now. There's the front and the back, and they look great. So now it's time to put the snaps on. We're back at our table, and here is the flower that we currently have. We have one more step, and it's to insert the, I shouldn't say insert, but attach the snaps. What we'll need here is we need a pressure clamp of some form to put the snap in and an owl to make the hole and some snaps. I've selected from my little snap collection here uh, the color pink and we need both a male side and a female side in order to make this close. So, you know, I'm not very scientific about where I placed each one of the snaps, but here's what I did. I will take, and we'll use it on the one we're going to finish here, and fold this, and it's like a natural fold due to that, that stitch line there. I'll take one of these snaps and make a little bit of an indention. Okay, now this is folded together, so we have a matching snap. Then I take the owl and very carefully and you can set it down if you'd like I just push it through one side which makes it go almost all the way through and then I turn it around and do the same thing going back the other way now you may want to simply go all the way through to make your hole and that works as well then we take our setting snap there and this is when I really lay it down on the table and using my fingernails or whatever object you have push that through set this one is the male side on there and then set it inside your clamp like so and squeeze. It doesn't need a lot. These are plastic um, plastic snaps and so it really doesn't take a lot to get them to set. There we go. Set it down and make sure we can get it through the fabric and make sure you have the right side down but it's actually quite self-explanatory. Set it in your tool like that and clamp and done. There you are. It's such a simple, fun little project and it's just an easy way to make something, I don't know, you don't have to go to the store with. We have extra rows of Sharon's around or even you could do this with a circle that you have at home, just a simple circle, or find a template and um, cut out your own circle to put your little accessories in. 
And let me show you. Got to test out our new cover here. And I'm going to, I didn't have this right next to me, but I'm going to grab my phone cord here and I just wrap it this way. Um, slide it inside, snap the edge, and there you have it. It's not going to move. It's not going to do anything. It just fits really, really nicely. So I hope this was a really, really fun little project. See you next time.